Hey, fellow plant people. Welcome back if you are returning to my channel. If you are new, my name is Jen and I go by The Leafy Geek here and also on Instagram. And I recently saw that there are quite a few of you who are new to my channel. So thank you for finding me. Uh, I'm happy to have you here. And yeah, this is a houseplant channel um, where we talk nerdy stuff about botany. <laughs> so today I am filming, I guess it's technically the third video in this series that I started, um, but officially under the, the title, it is technically the second. So in this series, I take a little bit closer look at some of the families of plants or the genera of plants within those families um, that kind of reflect what I have going on in my home and the collections that I have. Um, I am one of those people who really geeks out over most things science and Particularly, I like to learn as much as I can about the plants in my home because honestly, it, the more you know about your plants, the better you're going to be equipped to be able to care for them. And so I really like to take a look at uh, the taxonomy. I like to take a look at their natural habitat ranges, um, their conditions in which they thrive, all of those things kind of added together. Um, really inform me in my plant care. And so I just, I really enjoy discussing that and learning more about that. I'm by no means a, an expert in the art of taxonomy or at least in the interpretation of taxonomy. I know it changes all of the time. Uh, plants are constantly being reclassified. Um, so this is only as good as my amateur research skills uh, provide. Uh, so take my information with a grain of salt it's, you know, ever changing, but that's what's exciting about it too. And so this particular genus um, that we're gonna be talking about tonight is in the Vitaceae family. Uh, the Vitaceae is the grape family. Uh, yes, those grapes, the grapes we eat and the grapes that we make delicious, delicious wine from. And this genus is a cousin of the traditional grapes, the Vitae. I think that's how you say it, Vitae um, genus within um, Vitaceae. Uh, so this genus that we're going to talk about tonight is the largest genus in that family. It has upwards of 350 species alone in the single genus. Vitaceae overall, that family has 900 or so species across the family. So this is a substantial chunk of those species. Um, so, without further ado, we are going to be discussing the Cissus genus tonight. So, Cissus, wonderful vining plants. They're found across the globe, um, usually concentrated around the tropics. So, equatorial lines all the way around the globe. But they are widely dispersed. Um, some species, obviously, are, are a little bit more hard to come by as houseplants than others. But some are quite common. Um, and some are, have been used for other purposes, some medicinal purposes, et cetera, over, <laughs> over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, possibly thousands of years um, through antiquity. So we'll get into that. There's some really interesting um, specimens that I'm gonna share with you tonight. Um, but the format of these videos is that we kind of take a closer look at the taxonomy. We'll kind of walk through the general taxonomy of Cissus, of that genus. Um, and then we'll get into um, the show and tell. So I'll be able to share with you some of the uh, varieties of cissus that I have in my home. And I'll share with you a little bit uh, about them, what their conditions that they prefer are, my care um, that I provide for them, and why I just really love them so dang much. So without further ado, let's take a look at the taxonomy. Tonight's plant family being showcased is Vitaceae, also known as the grape family. This family has over 900 known species across 14 different genera. The genus that we're gonna be discussing tonight is known as Cissus. Now, Cissus is the largest of the 14 with over 350 species alone in this one particular genus. 
The second largest genus in this family is known as Siphostemma, and that one has about 250 different species in it. An interesting note is that the Siphostemma genus used to be categorized under Cissus, and in some circles it still is uh, considered one big genus. We'll get into a little bit more of that a little later on in the video. So some of these uh, 14 genera have only a single species to their name. But Cissus species are found across the world. They tend to be concentrated in tropical regions. Um, the name itself is derived from the Greek word for ivy. Cissus are considered lianas or woody vines that have terrestrial roots, which means that they are rooted in soil and that that's at ground level and they use trees or other means of vertical support so that they can access sunlight in the canopy. They basically climb to the sun. Uh, but liana is not actually a taxonomic term. It's more of a growth habit. So i.e. like shrub-like or tree-like. The liana growth habit is different from epiphyte um, in that it has terrestrial roots. It starts on the ground, it's rooted to the ground, and the vines climb other, other apparatuses in order to access the sun. Um, whereas epiphytes grow up in the canopy, that's where their roots are, are located. The whole plant is up in the canopy. Common names for Cissus are grape ivy and tree vine. Some of those common names are actually regional, um, i.e. Venezuelan tree vine is another name for Cissus rhombifolia. Um, also Peruvian grape ivy is a common name for uh, another Cissus, which actually has nothing to do with Peru. Um, it's also known as the Arabian wax ivy, which is more accurate in that it does naturally occur on the Arabian Peninsula. So in my home, these are the Cissus we're going to cover tonight. I have Cissus rhombifolia, rotundifolia, quadrangularis, adenopoda, and javana, also known as Cissus discolor. So on to the tour. Okay, let's start out with this little guy. So this is obviously my smallest. Um, it, obviously, it's probably probably not obvious to you yet because this is the first one I'm showing you. But this is my Cissus rotundifolia. So the rotundifolia is a little bit unique in that it it's, has a very significant succulence to its leaves and its stems. So this plant has several aliases. It's also known as the Arabian wax leaf. And it's also for some reason that I have not been able to figure out yet, it's called the Peruvian grape ivy in some circles. Although it has really no relation or association with that part of the world, um, rotundifolia is found naturally in Eastern Africa. So it is again, very succulent. These leaves are very succulent. Um, it doesn't require as much water as some of my other Cissus varieties that are that are found um, a little bit closer to like the tropical rainforest environments, um, particularly uh, like the Asiatic continent. But this one's really interesting. <laughs> it is actually a lot smaller than it used to be. I did have a few struggles with this one. I just didn't have it in the right light and I was still getting the hang of the watering. Um, so I, I definitely lost some of the larger leaves at the bottom. Um, but it's rebounded pretty nicely. You can see there's some new growth happening here. This was a stem that I had to cut off because um, the leaves were all gross. Um, but I'm getting the hang of it. So it, it again, you don't need to water this one as much as some of the others that I'm going to share with you. Um, I'd say every week and a half to two weeks, probably I'll, I'll push it out to two weeks definitely in the uh, slow or in the winter season. Um, but it's a really cool variety, so I definitely recommend giving this one a try if, if you encounter it. And I really haven't noticed any pest pressures with it either. It's been fairly stable um, in the pest department, even though it, you know, suffered a little bit and was stressed out because I didn't know how to water it. <laughs> 
So this again is Cissus rotundifolia. I recommend picking one of these up if you can. All right, this is another pretty interesting one. Um, as you can see, it's got that tri-leaf shape that is pretty recognizable for a lot of Cissus vines. Uh, this one is called Cissus adenipoda. Uh, that is one of its aliases. This one also ha it goes by several names and it's due to its taxonomic classification. Um, in some circles, this one is known as Cissus adenipoda. That's how it's been, it's been um, documented. In other circles, it's named or it would be found in another genus um, within the Vitessiae family. So Cissus kind of broke apart a little bit or there was a group of plants, primarily um, they were, what do they call them, caudexical? Or basically they're the plants that shared a common characteristic, which was a caudex, or like the, the bulbous base of a plant that stores water. Some plants within the Cissus genus had that feature. And so in some circles, they kind of reclassified that into its own genus, the Siphostemma genus. So same family, just kind of split it apart a little bit. So um, there are, I think, closer to 250 uh, plants in the Siphostemma genus. Um, but again, in some circles, they're all still one big one, one big, one big genus. Um, so this one, <laughs> it definitely looks like it belongs in the Cissus genus, um, but it's also known as Siphostemma adenipotum. So similar name, just doesn't really know where it belongs. Um, but this one's really cool. Um, it's native across uh, tropical and sub-Saharan Africa, so the African continent. Uh, and again, it has that tri-leaf shape. They're a little bit fuzzy and they almost feel like, I don't want to say sticky, but it feels like some sort of like residue if you kind of put too much pressure on a leaf. I'm not like breaking the leaf or crushing the leaf. It's just these hairs on the top of the leaf have this like, they leave like a waxy residue on your hands. So I maybe wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't consider this a good leaf petter plant um, if you don't like that feeling, um, but it's just a really neat specimen of a plant. And this guy, as you can see, is all about the vining. Um, it grabs onto pretty much anything in its immediate vicinity. So I gave it this hoop to try and control some of it, but I really want to be careful because I don't want it to start to like choke itself um, by vining around its own, uh, its own vines too much. So I might be looking for a different uh, situation for this guy. Um, this one I currently have in a north facing window, a minimal supplemental light. It kind of gets some indirect ambiance from one of my grow lights. And this is what it's doing. Like it's grown up and around this trellis a couple times already. So I think I'm doing okay. And then, yeah, I just tend to keep the, the soil moist. If I feel like the surface has dried out, I'll give it a quick water and make sure that the water runs through. So it's in pretty decent drainage as well. Um, kind of a, that combination soil that retains moisture, but also provides enough drainage to keep the roots from drowning. So this one's Cissus adenipoda. The next one I'm going to share with you has, again, a few different aliases, a few different names, but you'll recognize this one pretty much right away, I think. Let's see if I can get it all in the frame here. <laughs> So this one is, of course, known by a very common name for it as Cissus discolor. As you can see, those leaves, that signature leaf patterning on it. Um, it's also known as the Rex begonia vine. That's its common name. Um, also categorized as Cissus javana. And this one is native to South and Southeast Asia. So we're talking China, India, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, and this one is found at elevations of 600 to 2,000 meters. This is a new one for me. Um, I got this one, oh, a couple of weeks ago, 
And definitely um, when I ordered it, it, it's, it was posted on the seller site with a disclaimer that it does not always ship well. This particular variety does not necessarily ship well. Um, but if you kind of put it in a warm, humid location and, you know, cut away the dead foliage and just give it some time, it will acclimate and put out new vines in your home once it's kind of stabilized. Um, but this is all original. This, this, this is the plant I got. And it's looking pretty darn good. Um, there were some die-off points, I think, for it. But I'm also seeing new growth points at those, at those nodes, which is really interesting. Um, and yeah, this one I'm definitely keeping an eye on. I'm trying to keep it in a humid corner of my home where I have some of my, some of my other humidity-loving plants. I'll definitely be setting up a humidifier for the winter in that location. So that's something to keep in mind. This one likes humidity. Uh, and it's it's doing really well. I'm pretty impressed so far. But yeah, it, it, it shipped to me. It arrived on time. But it just happened to be a really cold day. Um, I hadn't really checked the forecast. Shame on me. Um, before or placing the order. Um, so it was, it was, I was worried. I was like, okay, I'm just going to have to cut it all back and it's going to basically start over. Um, but not so far. It's doing pretty good. I love that leaf. I love that leaf. <laughs> I love that leaf. I love all the leaves. But yeah, this is, again, so this is Discolor, so this is Giovanna, or the Rex Begonia vine. This is my Sissus that looks pretty unique uh, comparatively to these other vining guys. This is my Sissus quadrangularis. And as you can see, I have it on, or, or trying to have it on a bamboo hoop to kind of stabilize it. You'll see this plant in a lot of homes as a trailing plant. That made me super nervous because even though you can see this, um, this stalk, tendril, vine, is is rigid fairly and upright the joints are so delicate and I have broken more than my fair share of little nodes off of this thing and just having it as a vining plant I know that I, if I looked at it wrong it would break again and again and again so this is trying to <laughs> this is my effort at achieving some level of stability for it um, as you can see, I have the Velcro tape kind of attaching the two largest branches. Um, so we'll kind of go from there and see, see how it does. But I prefer this, I think, to just letting it kind of drape over and potentially snap. Uh, so Cissus quadrangularis. It's also known as the Veld grape. It's also known as the devil's backbone. Those are two common names for it. This plant has an ancient and extensive history. Um, it is, it's historically been used as a medicinal plant uh, since antiquity, since like blah, thousands of years ago. <laughs> it's, uh, it's in traditional herbal medicine. Um, it's been used Ay Ayurvedic. I, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Ayurvedic um, medicine. Um, but it's also recently um, been utilized in modern medical studies, uh, specifically in studies uh, that are looking to combat osteoporosis. So there are some properties in it that, you know, both historically and currently um, people have thought had some merit in terms of medicinal uses uh, for bone related illnesses or disorders. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, that's about all I know about that. I don't. I didn't really delve too much into the medical uh, research aspect of this plant, but it has been used extensively across history for that purpose. Quadrangularis is also, um, it's found in tropical Asia, um, on the Arabian Peninsula, and also uh, throughout much of Africa. So this is a pretty widespread plant, uh, hence all of the familiarity with it, um, it across across those regions. So it's a really interesting plant. I have it, oh, I'm kind of moving this one around a little bit, but it's been pretty stable wherever I put it. Um, as long as it has an adequate light source, if it's a window, like an, even a north facing window, it's done okay in, um, but certainly under a grow light is where it's been thriving. That's where you see it has these, these leaf growths, these leaves, these tiny little leaves that grow out of the joints. 
have been not doing too badly. Like, I don't know, I could probably take better care of it, but I, I really just tend to neglect this one um, because it just, it's so stable. It, it just hangs out. I water it probably as often as I water the uh, rotundifolia, um, which is every week to two weeks ish. Whenever the soil is, you know, I stick my finger in the soil about half, half an inch or so. And if it's dry, I'll water it. Um, but yeah, it, it's doing pretty good. I like this one a lot. I'd be interested to see it as a draping plant, I think. Um, but I'm just, I'm too nervous. I don't want to lose the growth that I have so far. Um, it is, for me, it's been hard to root, um, you know, segments that fall off. I haven't had a lot of success getting those to reroot, which is, I don't know, if, you, if you've ever, you know, propagated this thing, just put a, put a note in the comments, let me know what you did, because my tried methods haven't worked for me very well for this one. So I'd, I'd be interested to know, for those of you who grow quadrangularis, how, how you do it and how you propagate it. So yep, this is Sissus quadrangularis. Okay, my fifth and final Sissus variety that I have growing in my home is not in this room with me. <laughs> it is too large, in fact, for me to have in the frame in this room right now. It lives in my living room and I'm going to take you over there and I will share that final Sissus uh, species with you right now. Let's go. And here is my fifth and last Cissus species that I have to show you tonight. This is Cissus rhombifolia, also known, actually it's categorized as Cissus alata as well. Uh, common names for this one are Venezuelan tree vine, and the one that I usually refer to it as is oak leaf ivy. And that is due to the shape of the leaves. So Cissus rhombifolia is native to the New World, uh, so on the America side of things, in the tropical region. So Mexico, down to Bolivia, and then over to Venezuela, Trinidad, and Guiana in South America. So it is pretty prolific in the New World tropics. And this variety, this particular specimen here, is one that I have inherited. Uh, this plant might be older than I am at this point. Uh, it was my grandmother's and um, I inherited it from her. And it is an amazing plant. We consider this our heirloom plant. Um, I have shared cuttings with several family members. <laughs> um, so everybody gets a piece of grandma's oak leaf ivy. I affectionately call this plant Betty. And of course that's named after grandma. So it is one of my favorite plants in my home. It has a special place in my heart. I really do enjoy this plant a lot. And as you can see, it's pretty happy in this little corner. It's grown away, reaching for the grow light that's over here. So I do have an additional supplemental grow light on this side for, for that particular side because it's so dark over here. But again, it's so versatile. It just does well wherever you kind of place it. As long as you give it adequate supplemental light, if you don't have the window or like a, a, good, uh, a good light source naturally for it. Um, this one again, water it probably once a week, but I do sometimes forget. Uh, so it does well withstanding neglect even. Um, but yeah, again, similar rule. Just try and determine if the top like half inch to an inch of soil is dry. It's probably due for a water. Um, and limited pest issues with this one. I do have a history of thrips. It did once um, pick up some thrips. Um, but after treatment, it, it withstood treatment and it did really well after that. And I have not seen any sign of them since. Um, you can tell when, when thrips happen, um, the tops of these leaves almost go silver. Um, and then if you flip them over, you'll see a bunch of little white specks, which are the larva. Um, but yeah, they basically scratch the surface of the leaves down to the, to the skeletal structure of the leaf. Um, damn thrips. <laughs> but this is a great plant. I highly, highly recommend if you can find one, um, you will not regret. Cissus rhombifolia. 
All right, guys, so that's it for me. That was my little tour of my Sissus plants, um, members of the Vitessiae family. Um, so that's a really fun genus. Um, it's a fun family to explore. I don't know how many of the other genera are considered house plant um, material, but the Sissus is a, an adaptable, versatile genus to consider if you're looking to add some visual vining interest in your home. They're really, they're really great. They're really great plants. They're really low maintenance. They grow a lot for you. They're fun to watch um, and kind of watch the progress on. Um, and yeah, I just, I really, really enjoy this, this particular genus. So I hope you do too. I hope you guys are having a great night and a great week. And until next time, enjoy your plants. <music>